On a guess. Lend me your ears. Long as our Fevermon suffered without a true monarch to guide her and her people. Decades have passed since last His Majesty Erland sat atop the Draken throne. Long have we endured, yet it has not been for naught. At last, the bell has tolled on the age of the Consul. At last, we may celebrate the coming of our rightful ruler. The return of the Sovereign. <laughs> My word! Such an inspiring visage! Your Majesty shall have my eternal yeah, fealty. Your no Majesty, of how long I have waited this moment. Behold, before you sits the rightful inheritor of the Draken Throne, chosen by the dragon as its enemy. Behold a rejoice! Fortune has delivered us our savior at last! At last! Praise be, for only the Sovereign's guidance can lead us true. All hail the Sovereign! All hail! Let all present Pledge your allegiance to the Sovereign. Let us be united in the hope that our legions reign will near end. Long live the Sovereign of Vermont! Long live the Sovereign! Arisen, thou who wouldst slay the dragon, if thou seekest to behold this world in its true aspect, abandon thy reason. Cast aside thine heart and thy knife, both. I ask thee to demonstrate thy will, for naught but thine ambition can alter the course of the rivers of fate. Now, which one of you was it? No need to be shy. I've just got to take down a record of your name and face. Come on, step forward. Aha! I thought I recognized you. I ill like that look in your eyes. Tis queerly brazen for a pawn. Most of your kind have eyes blank as a cadaver's. Mayhap tis only natural, seeing as how you rise from the dead. There's aught different about you, though. Could it be that you fear death just as we mortals do? Worry not, Vessel. Three days here, and you'll be longing for death's sweet embrace. Come along, you feckless dullards. Do your injuries pain you? Pray, do not overexert yourself. This is no place for one of your ilk. Tis harsh beyond measure. Even we pawns are pushed to the brink. You ought not anger the overseer. Let us proceed to the site. A job well done. Now the next step is to... No, the damn thing's been a 
Bok. You got to fell that fiend, even at the cost of your lives! No one could survive a fall from this height. Not even a pawn. Don't just stand there! Shoot it down!
Pray, keep your distance, Arisen. Worry not for me. The grind may swallow me whole, but I will not perish. There is a stone not far from here, known as a rift stone. Pray, seek it out. If you're truly the Arisen, then our paths will surely cross again. Oi! Are you alright? What happened here? A griffin appears one moment and falls the next. And now you stand before me. Was it you then? The one who was riding on its back. Tis a wonder you survived. Accompany me to the stronghold. We'll treat your wounds and hear your story. Welcome, Arisen. We pawns have long awaited your arrival. What is this? The pawns? They bend the knee to you so readily, but then... No. Surely you cannot be the Arisen. You seek the Riftstone, do you not? We can take you to it. Pray, come this way. Before you stands a Riftstone. Tis a gate by which we of the Pawn Legion may cross Ur into this world. Pray, summon your pawn. Simply paint with your mind's eye the loyal attendant whom you would have serve you. Pawns are known as crosses of the rift for we are able to connect to and traverse other realms beyond this one. When we return, it is our duty to use our experiences and the knowledge we have gained to aid you on your journey, Arisen. From this day forth, I shall serve you as your loyal pawn, and aught I learn beyond the rift will be at your disposal. Well, I'll be a pawn summoning before my very eyes. You truly are the Arisen, then. Strange. I thought the Arisen was in the capital. Surely there's only meant to be one Arisen. Fine. This is all beyond my ken. The Watchhead would know what to do, I'm sure. Though, as luck would have it, he's away. I suppose we'll save any further questions till the Watchhead returns. You're free to do as you like afore then. What? You've no memories, you say? Mayhap you could make for Melv, then. It was set upon by the dragon not long ago. The Arisen is said to bear some deep connection to the dragon. Should you be Arisen, mayhap you'll recall aught of import there. Hast thou forgotten thy destiny, thy charge? That is most unfortunate. But it doth not release thee from thy fate.
Can you hear me, sir? Sir, stay with me. Goodness, how are you feeling? This is the second time I've watched over you like this, isn't it? Pray, save your thanks. Tis only just that I should aid you in turn. After all, tis only by your courage that I live today. Had you not leapt between me and that dragon, I know you suffered for it. Such ghastly wounds. And I could not hear your heart beating. It was a miracle that you survived. Arisen? I'm afraid I don't understand your meaning. Does it have aught to do with why you were taken to the castle? They said twas so that your wounds could be treated. Though I fear you have no memory of this either. Has he come for you? We are to part so soon then. Mayhap you will visit me again someday. Till then, take care. Everson. Ah, excellent. You must be the one. You match my soldier's description. I'm glad I found you. The ruler of Vermont, currently convalescing in the capital, became arisen here in this very village. If you claim the same, then word must be borne to the capital. I dispatched a missive before coming here, though I doubt the matter can be settled without your presence. Would you be willing to accompany me to the capital? If you truly are arisen, you will be received with open arms. I was informed of your coming would be arisen. Captain Brandt, this individual summoned a pawn through a rift stone. Several witnesses can attest to it. Though I admit I had my doubts at first, it would seem this is no mere deceiver. This one's not a bad sort. Saved our hides on the way here. As decreed by the great will of our world, there can only be one arisen. That arisen now resides within the palace. Indeed. He is our sovereign and the rightful ruler of Vermont. It follows, therefore, that this ruffian before us is naught but a pretender. You must submit to questioning. If you value your life, you will not attempt to flee. I shall conduct the interrogation myself. Stand watch outside. I beg your forgiveness for my insolence, Your Majesty. If the Queen Regent had learned of your existence, I fear your life would have been in peril. I had no choice but to treat you as a pretender, lest my actions draw suspicion from watchful eyes. Then you have truly lost your memory? In that case, mayhap I ought to explain the situation before we proceed. You, and no other, are the Sovereign. The only legitimate ruler of this kingdom. Some days passed. You confronted the dragon in the village of Melv, whereupon you became arisen. The people rejoiced, for our true liege had finally appeared, and in Vermont's long years of council rule. Yet, not all celebrated your coming.
Your arrival would have robbed the Queen Regent Deesa of everything. During the time of the previous consul, she acted as a queen in her own right, ruling the palace as she saw fit. And just after the consul's passing, when twas all but certain that her son would take his father's place. Word reached the castle that the Arisen had been found. To Deesa, your majesty's very existence is naught but an obstacle to her own family's continued prosperity. The assassination of the Arisen is an impossible feat for mortal hands. Thus, Deesa chose to abduct your majesty while you recovered from your wounds, in order to rob you of your memory with a fell curse and sell you to Batal as a slave. Following that, she prepared a replacement to serve as the sovereign in your stead, a mere puppet. However, with your majesty returned, I have no intention of twiddling my thumbs as Deesa plays her games. I shall devise some plans to further our cause. Pray, visit me a night in the tavern that we might discuss them. Pray forgive me, I'm in a bit of a hurry. <laughs> Consarn it! Get back here! You there! Did you see an urchin in a cap run past just now? Can you tell me which way he went? Many thanks. I'll catch that wretch yet. You're a kind one, aren't you? It would seem I am in your debt. In fact, there's aught I would ask of you if you've the time to spare. Aha! There you are! Oh, apologies, but our chat will have to wait. Till next we meet. Farewell. As I informed you when last we spoke, the palace is filled with the Queen Regent's sycophants. Should Deesa denounce your majesty as a false arisen, few would elect to doubt her. Yet if we are to prove your identity, I believe there is no occasion more suitable than the coronation. It was delayed so that the Sovereign, that is, the False Arisen, could convalesce in the palace, but the date has now been set. The central players in the court ought all be in attendance. It would be a fine opportunity to display your majesty's power. None would be able to deny that you are the true Arisen then. There is a problem, however. Entry to such an event is limited to the chosen few. Only select members of the nobility and citizens who have contributed greatly to Vermont's continued prosperity will be granted entry. If your majesty is to be counted among them, you will need to attend to a number of tasks. Pray, allow me to summarize them for you. The citizenry have called upon my soldiers to cull monsters that plague the land. I dare say, it would be a fine contribution were you to accomplish these tasks unaided. What say you? Might I ask for your cooperation in this matter? Very well. I would not think to press you on this matter. Perhaps you would consider taking on a different task then. You will need to infiltrate the palace to gather evidence of Deezer's misdeeds. I hesitate to ask something so dangerous of you, yet I fear we have few other options. I have attempted to do the same through my own channels before now, though I have yet to uncover so much as a whisper of her plots. Would that I could undertake the task myself, but my station prohibits me from reckless action. What say you, your majesty? Might I ask this task of you? Very well. I would not think to press you on this matter. Of all those who serve the Queen Regent, there is but one who I have no doubt will lend his support to your majesty's cause. I refer to Waldar, a magistrate. Many a time as Deza demanded Waldor amend the Code of Roman to her own benefit, and many a time as the magistrate refused her, for he is loyal to none but the spirit of the law. As a result, he now sits in a cell beneath the palace. Our laws dictate that your majesty is our rightful ruler. Thus, as the staunchest supporter of the law known to the palace, I'm quite confident that Waldor will be willing to vouch for your majesty. What say you? Might you be willing to aid me in arranging the magistrate's release? 
place with books likely to entice Magistrate Waldor, you say? Not springs to mind, I'm afraid. Kendrick of the Gracious Hand is versed in many things. Perchance he knows of such a place? If we are to strengthen your Majesty's claim, while examining the palace ledger for evidence of the Queen Regent's misdeeds, I made a curious discovery. For some time now, it seems, she has been diverting a veritable mountain of gold to the daily purchase of sweet crown flour. What's more, this inexpedient spending habit is recorded to have begun the very day on which Arthur, the would-be arisen, appeared on the scene. This cannot be mere happenstance. I can only conclude that these sums are passing into the hands of Arthur himself. Yet, tis strange, for sweet crown flowers only grow on the eastern edge of Romond. I dare say, twas not an item chosen idly. Mayhap this knowledge will guide us in our pursuit of the false sovereign. Tis a frail hope to be certain. Yet all the same, I would ask that your majesty venture to Vermont's eastern edge and probe into this young man's origins. Very well. If, the, however, do not forget that exposing the false sovereign will be vital in orchestrating your rightful ascension to the throne. I pray that you will aid me in this ere long. Then your majesty's claim. Since Magistrate Wardor has been safe, mayhap it would be prudent to visit man on occasion and avail yourself of his vast stores of wisdom. He might have knowledge that could benefit you on your travels. Now, would you be so kind as to return the key I lent you? I thank you. Pray. Take this. Consider it remuneration for your majesty's efforts. Who's there? Pray, keep your voice low. Twouldn't be good for either of us if someone was summoned to come check on me. Could it be that you have come to bring mother's schemes to light? Aye, Deesa is my mother. Pray forgive me for not telling you sooner. It was never my intent to deceive you. I simply feared that if I spoke the truth, none would wish to involve themselves with me. But that is no longer a concern. Tis clear that we are allied in purpose. My word! You mean to say that you are the true Arisen? That the Sovereign currently residing in the palace is a pretender? Could Mother have had a hand in that as well? Regent Kin Sven appears to be missing from his chambers. Have you seen him? Me? No, sir. Then start searching, you fool. Should aught befall the Regent Kin, tis us who'll answer to her grace. Forgive me. My absence seems to have made this rather more difficult for us. You ought leave the palace at once. This room turned up little of interest. But I've a mind to look into this further. I shall send word to Captain Brandt if I discover aught you should know. I'll head out first and speak with the Sentinels. Use that opportunity to make good your escape. How fared your mission? Was there aught suspicious to be found in the Queen Regent's office? This scrap. It was part of a letter. And from Batal, no less. This alone can prove little, but it is clear that Deezer's schemes run deep. To think, Deezer's actions have weighed even on the mind of her own son. Tis a surprise, but a welcome one. Deezer is a, the doting mother before the Regent King. If Regent King Sven is willing to aid us by drawing Deezer's focus, we may be able to gain here more useful information. You have done well, your majesty. Though I am limited in the aid I am able to offer, I bid you, take this, which we ought to tend to. If we are to you've done a fine job culling those monsters, your majesty. Tis common knowledge among the people that t'was you who delivered them from danger. The number of those who seek out this tavern in the hope of an audience with the Arisen grows by the day. Should you continue to display such valor, the day will soon come when Deesa can no longer deny your presence, and ere it slips my mind. Pray, take this. Tis a symbol of my own gratitude, as a true- I bear word from Regent Ken Sven, your majesty. He espied the delivery of a suspicious package to a man named Allard, a minister who happens to be one of the Queen Regent's staunchest and most powerful allies in the palace. From the pains he took to remain on scene, it is plain that Allard wished this delivery kept away from prying eyes. That alone is reason to suspect a connection to Deezer's schemes. We must get to the bottom of it. 
The Regent Kin intends to call Allard to his chambers come nightfall. He bids you to use this opportunity to search the Minister's chambers and see if there is aught to be learned. What say you, Your Majesty? Are you willing to undertake this task? Very well. I shall not press. But know that your assistance in this matter would be greatly appreciated. For some time now, it was said that the false sovereign was recovering from his battle wounds. But as I hear it, he is now well enough to walk unaided. And so, in honor of his supposed valor, they have been holding masquerade in the palace of late. The false sovereign's identity is still beyond our ken. Even the matter of from where he hails remains a mystery. But mayhap approaching the false sovereign at one of these gatherings could afford you a glimpse into the man behind the mask. What say you, your majesty? Might I ask this task of you? What business could be so pressing that I must be summoned at this late hour? I would not presume to know, my lord. However, it must be a highly sensitive matter for the Regent Kin to request a private audience. Oh, perhaps the boy has finally grown wise to the benefits my favor can bring. He might just be his mother's puppet, but at least he knows what's good for him. M my lord, if someone were to overhear... Oh, unring your hands, you fool! As if anyone in this palace would dare say a word against me. Now, if Wilhelmina calls, tell her to await me in my chambers. I will return presently. If we are to for some time now, it was said that the false sovereign was recovering from his battle wounds. But as I hear it, he is now well enough to walk unaided. And so, in honor of his supposed valor, they have been holding masquerade in the palace of late. The false sovereign's identity is still beyond our ken. Even the matter of from where he hails remains a mystery. But mayhap approaching the false sovereign at one of these gatherings could afford you a glimpse into the man behind the mask. What say you, your majesty? Might I ask this task of you? My thanks. Some of the sentries posted at the masquerades are under my command. I shall have them ease security. So pray, slip into the venue through whatever opening presents itself. Once your infiltration is successful, you will need only don a mask and act the part of an invitee. Few will think to be wary if they believe you a fellow masquerader. Here, this should suffice to help you blend in. Well now, you're... What is it? Has something happened? Uh, we have it on good authority that a suspicious individual passed through here. We need to scout the area. Well, scout all the right. In here. Open up. Open this door right now. We're coming in. Get out. Out of Dressed rather austerely for a patron. My humblest apologies, Lady Wilhelmina. We've had reports of an unseemly character in the vicinity, you see, and... Preposterous. I was out front till but a moment ago, and I did not see so much as a shadow. Be that as it may. You are excused. Leave this place. Ere you invite our noble host's wrath upon yourself, I will summon you if aught is amiss. Pray forgive me. And what business have you here in the noble's playground? Hmm? Huh? You've the face of someone in search of a juicy morsel. Would you be looking for this, perchance? Come on, then. Keep pouring. Do you take me for some green lad who can't handle his cups? I'm your damned king, and a king deserves royal treatment. <laughs> <laughs> of course, your majesty. Tell us, your majesty, would you prefer more drink, or shall we find some other way to amuse ourselves? <laughs> aye, aye. Let's change things up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
I believe I cautioned you to keep your drunken revelry in check. Lest you forget, these celebrations of your valor are but a pretense for more serious matters. I, I know. I do. It's just I get the poison in me and things happen is all. You need only serve as our false king until Sven becomes consul. Till then, however, you would do well to remember that your role demands a certain degree of dignity. I trust you understand your position, your majesty. Nay, I, I mean I. As you say, I'll, I'll go and sober up. Why not remove yours as well? This is not the Masquerade Hall, and we now find ourselves quite alone. What say we dispense with such pretenses and speak openly with one another, Lord Phasus? That will do. If you're discovered, yours won't be the only head that rolls. What is your purpose here, I wonder? If you came to learn of the Sovereign, then tis as you have seen. The man is not but a ale-swilling pretender propped up by the Queen Regent. Of course, that begs the question. If he's a mere mummer, then where might our true arisen be? You'd best go. I'll do what I can to help you make your escape. As you can see, I run an establishment that caters to certain... pleasures. You're welcome to come and play any time, if you escape with your life, that is. Know, however, that our services do not come cheap. Well, well. He is merely Deesa's puppet, then. Tis likely that he knows naught of her schemes, even were he to be removed. I suspect some other would simply be made to take his place. But if there's aught that compels my attention, Test this other man you mention. Phasus, was it? He seems a man of import. And yet, I have never heard of him. Pray, allow me to investigate this matter further. You've done well, Your Majesty. Thank you. I have been pursuing all of the channels available to me. But I am afraid I have yet to uncover any new information pertaining to the false sovereign. Would your majesty be willing to venture to Vermont's eastern edge to probe into the young man's origins? I am glad to hear it, for I cannot shake the feeling that uncovering the identity of the false sovereign is the key to unraveling Deesa's scheme and securing your enthronement. You there! Are you looking to enter the village? You'd best go elsewhere, friend. What's wrong about this place? There's no business to be had here, that's for sure. You made it after all. Guess that means I win. Oi, you lot best pay up. Dear me. You didn't disappoint, did you? You've done well. Seems only fair I answer any questions weighing on you. Go on. Ask away. Figures you'd want to know about him. We're supposed to be neutral. Ordinarily, I wouldn't say a word about one of our jobs. But I suppose I can tell you, the situation being what is. His real name is Dora. He was one of us. One. But he's been exiled. We had no choice, see? After he went off to play the false arisen, we're men and women of shadow. Center stage isn't our place to stand. That's why he was cast out. He'll near be part of our village again. That all you wanted to ask? What can I say? Not many people bother with this place. Luckily for me, you were different. Knew I was right to bet in favor of the Arisen. Anyway, 
Most visitors get fooled into going up to the manor. We send them packing with a trifle, and if they don't question it, good riddance. Anyone that complacent has got no business being a thief. We only train the rare few who make it here. Some might go so far as to say that the entire village was built around this spot. That all you wanted to ask? For all this, Dara was in line to become the next thief, Maester. But he failed. Took a massive injury to the chest during the trial. So the title fell to me. That's when he went off, saying he used the scar in his chest to pose as the Arisen. And what a scheme that turned out to be, eh? Now he gets to sit pretty on the best seat in the kingdom. Still, you'd have a hard time proving that he's not who he says he is. He's a wily one, that Dara. Always was careful not to leave behind a shred of evidence. But we can't have him thinking that he gets to go off and enjoy a peaceful life in the lap of luxury after breaking our code. Me thinks he needs something to remind him of the debt he owes us. Here, this should do the trick. Now, as to the Maester's teaching, not sure you'll be able to use it to its fullest potential, but I'll show it to you. If we are to... Have you divined aught of the false sovereign, your majesty? This appears to be a bill calling for the arrest of a man named Dara. But hold a moment. Does this man's countenance not bear an uncanny resemblance to that of the false sovereign? Hmm. I see. If your majesty is certain that the two are one and the same, then I am convinced as well. However, I'm afraid this paper alone does not constitute sufficient proof. Ah, but of course. I surmise your majesty intends to post the bill and invite suspicion. A clever plan. The Queen Regent will be forced to deny any connection to our new sovereign, yet will be unable to remove the bill from the public eye. Furthermore, it will serve as an attestation to Dara's existence, which shall remain an undeniable truth till the man resurfaces, and all the while, the doubts lurking in the hearts of the citizenry will continue to deepen. A clever ploy indeed. I shall attend to this matter personally. I have no doubt that this bill will prove its worth in due course. You have my gratitude, Your Majesty. Your aid has been invaluable. Surely none more important than this. I speak of the ascension of the Sovereign. Indeed. But that, Your Grace, would be better discussed in the presence of your mother. Well, well. We meet again. Is this stealthy business becoming a habit of yours? Oi! Who goes there? Who's there? Tut, tut. Now, this just won't do. How's a lady supposed to work with all these interruptions? Oh, it is you, Lady Wilhelmina. Mm-hmm. Do excuse us. We thought to enjoy a little fresh air. Though... We had hoped for slightly more privacy, if you catch my meaning. Apologies, my lady. But might I ask the name of your companion? Are you sure it would be wise? Such knowledge has been known to cost a man his head. Ah, uh, understood, my lady. If anyone asks, I shall say I saw naught. A narrow escape. You should count yourself lucky that he was so easily flustered. I don't appreciate having my motives questioned. I did as I saw fit. Need I say more? Something tells me this shan't be the last I see of you. Perhaps you'll be good enough to repay me when next we meet. As a true Aris, I know this sigil well. Tis the crest of the neighboring country of Batal, a land with which Vermin has no official dealings at present. Let me see. It reads, True to our word, 
We offer you the power of the Godsway. Pray make haste in securing Melv, that all might be made ready ere our plans are set in motion. A meager clue, to be certain. Though, tis clear that the Queen Regent conspires with Batal. This does not bode well at all. Though the political situation is stable at present, much blood has been spilt between Vermund and his neighbor in the past. I fear such a partnership would only portend the drawing of more. At any rate, to seem our search has led us to only more questions. Chief among them, what is meant by securing Melv and this God's way? I will investigate these matters as best I can. In the interim, your majesty, should you have time to spare, might you make for Melv? Only once we have gleaned a fragment of the Queen Regent's plot, can we begin to thwart it. And ere it slips my mind, pray, take this. Perchance it will help speed you on your way to Melv. Or shall change once we have attended the coronation. If your majesty has any unfinished business to attend to, tis best you do so before we depart. Very well. The coronation is to take place on the morrow. We shall depart early in the morn, so your majesty would do well to get a good night's rest. your will. Could it be that the gods sway? We must quit this place, your majesty. I fear our plans may fall to naught. Let us return to the tavern. False Sovereign commanded the pawns at the coronation, proving his own powers arisen. According to Regent King Sven, the pretender was wearing some sort of lavish necklace at the time. I imagine this artifact is the God's way mentioned in that letter. A chance tis a tool that grants power king to that of the true arisen. It would do much to explain the events that we have beheld afore now. Alas, unless we find some way to unmake this God's way's power, Proving your majesty's legitimacy shall be difficult indeed. Allow me to speak to the agent we captured some days past. Perchance he knows aught of use. If the information we pried from the agent is to be believed, there is a place in Batal devoted to the study of arts most queer. I believe it is worthy of investigation. Should fortune smile upon us, your majesty may even discover some method of undoing the godsway's hold over the pawns. Yet, official dealings twixt Vermund and Vital are suspended, and tis no simple matter to gain passage through the latter's fortress. Fortunately for us, however, the agent was hiding this on his person. I bid you take it. Tis an entry permit, allowing passage through Vital's fortress. It even bears the crest of the Batali Palace. It must have been commissioned by someone with great influence. I doubt any would dare impede your passage with such an item in your possession. There is one other thing, your majesty. With the permit came information I found most intriguing. An oracle who once served in the Vermondian court now resides in Batal. This oracle foretold the coming of the Arisen and was banished from the kingdom when her prophecy displeased the queen regent. Indeed, it was by this same oracle's power that the agent in question came to know of your majesty's whereabouts. The oracle knows much of the Arisen, should you make her acquaintance, she may be able to offer you aid during your infiltration. A merchant, eh? Have you an entry permit? Hold a moment. That cart has priority. Lord Phasus is come! Open the gates!
So, after breaking free of the chains of slavery that once bound you to this land, you return of your own volition. This is good. I am relieved to see that you are fulfilling your charge. Now, it would be advantageous for you and your pawn to visit the Rockmaster's borough. In back, methinks, it is where you will find that which you see. What business have you here? Does that make you the arisen? Be at ease. I bear you no ill will. My name is Manella, and I have the honor of serving as a go-between twixt Her Majesty and the Gar. Come, let me buy you a drink. We've much to discuss, and I don't fancy standing round all the while. Shall we make for the tavern? The people of Batal view pawns with great prejudice. They're even forbidden from setting foot in the capital. Her Majesty, Empress Nadinia, has long been troubled by this custom. But a practice so ancient isn't easily overturned. Many are unhappy about the existence of this tavern, even though it lies outside the capital, simply because it was established as a place for pawns to gather. I know not what manner of person you are, but if you would aid me in my efforts to make the people of Batal more accepting of pawns, I would be glad to offer you a residence permit. Tis a bargain more than fair, for those who hold such permits may remain in back Batal without having their activities questioned. What say you? Glad I am to hear it. Take this then. Simply show it to one of the sentries and you'll be granted entry to the capital. Oh, and if you encounter any troubled Batali along the way, I bid you assist them. They are harsh in their persecution of the pawns, but were they to be aided by the targets of their ire, mayhap a few stubborn hearts would soften. A simple plan I know, but is the only one available, or so it seems to me. I bid you good fortune. Sir Arisen. All knowledge of this, God's way, stems from the forbidden magic research laboratory, which can be found here in Batal. However, you would do well to first travel to the Alter Batal coast and seek a man named Ambrosius. For as a researcher of this laboratory, he will doubtless be able to answer many of your questions. Who are you? Uh, no, never mind, it is of little import. I'm searching for blue crystal shards. Find any, and I'll pay you handsomely. The bigger they are, the higher your reward will be. Is that all? Tiny fragments such as these aren't nearly good enough. Still, I expect I'll find a use for them. Here, take your coin and be gone. Tis a god's sweat. Well, to be precise, the crystalline substance from which tis made. By refining such crystals, anyone can attain the power of the Arisen. The power to command coins, that is. However, small fragments are meaningless. They cannot contend with the Arisen's power, you see. Speaking of which, should you find any large fragments, bring them to me, won't you? Though that might be difficult, we've scoured this area quite thoroughly, I think. It is possible larger shards may have been mistaken for jewels and carried off by scavengers or collected for some such. Mayhap one such as the Oracle or the Dragonfall would be able to aid you in locating them. I can tell you no more than that. Since times of Elder, dragon blood has been used to refine all manner of equipment. I myself learned the art by deciphering ancient texts. Remember, Draconic blood flows through the veins of lesser drakes as well. Bring me what ye reap, and I shall harness it to your benefit. Tutes, be it a hapless fate, the gods sway. Forgive me, but I've ne'er heard of such a thing. However, some years past, a sorcerer of Batal came to me seeking knowledge of the dragon, just as ye have. Faces, sir. I believed he called himself. It appeared his intent was to alter the will of the world through mortal means. Perhaps there is some connection. I knew you would come. A 
risen one. You seek answers, and you shall have them, if tis within my power to know them. Loath as I am to admit it, I know little of the artifact of which you speak, though I shall tell you aught I can. I sense a land soaked in warmth, a warmth akin to your own arisen, to that of the power of the life you possess. Yet it now lies many fathoms below the surface of the sea, in a place unreachable by mortal hands. Though it is strange, for I sense also that this warmth grows ere near. Twould seem a path will be open to you in time, allowing you to venture into the heart of this warmth. So Perhaps he who was Dragonforged can tell you more. Seek him out in Har Village, if you would learn from him. About time you came along. I've a special tale to share with you today. Or so I'd like to say, but it's getting rather late. Best spend the night. We can talk again come the morning. Ah, good. You're awake. Look to the sea, my friend. Hard to resist setting out in one's boat with fair skies like these, eh? Now, I've told you about the sunken temple in the middle of the sea, haven't I? I I'm quite sure I mentioned it. But I ne'er spoke of the man who resides there. He was such a worthy ruler in life that his armies safeguard him even in death. As he himself would have it. He was once entrusted with the task of watching over this world from the heavens above. Yet he tired of his duty and abandoned his perch in the sky in favor of founding a small kingdom on the ground. Alas, though he was a just and goodly ruler, there is not a single person alive who remembers his name. Ooh, it sounds unfortunate, but if you ask me, it is all a matter of perspective. It can be a blessing to forget, and to be forgotten. I should know. In all my long years, I've never forgotten a single thing. I remember everything, every little detail. Would that I could forget some of it. <laughs> a lie it may seem, but a lie it is not. I speak only the truth, as you well know. Come see me again, if it pleases you. <laughs> I've tales of plenty to share. Heavens, Fen. I'd ne'er seen the light. I'd not known there were ruins in the depths of this cavern till the path appeared. Twas magic, methinks. I should have liked to investigate if the place hadn't been crawling with monsters. I'll be needing sturdier arms than these before I head back in there, I fear. At any rate, I'd best report this discovery to my commander. I only pray Nort Grave shall come of it. So, another comes seeking to inter me. Yet your wicked schemes will avail you not. Watching one time and again have you sent unto me your minions. Yet repel them I have, and so I shall anew, till I might claim the true world as mine own. Why do you not draw your blade? <laughs> This battle shall be o'er before it has even begun! You seek not my death. Hmm. Then you are not of the Watching One. I am Rothas, founder of the Kingdom of Vermund. And you appear to be a reason. Tell me your reason for coming here. God's way. Hmm. Speak you of those trinkets conjured by the wizards of Batal. Even from these depths, I have beheld the Batali scuttling about, gathering their fragments. 
baleful, maddening act to transmute the fractured souls of Arisen into such frivolous baubles. Aye, that which you seek is a soul much like your own, yet rarely will you find one intact, for splinters are all the remain of those pitiful Arisen who were bade come here by the Watching One to end me. The flesh may rot, the soul fragment, yet power, power endure. And would seem the Batali seek to augment this power through their perverted arts. Though to what nefarious end, I know not. Yet it is folly, the frolicking of children. Such a trinket could ne'er hope to fell the dragon, let alone the watching one. I know little of your intent, but I sense in you a powerful will. A will that urges you towards fulfillment of some great feat. I shall grant you this blade. It, too, is the soul of an Arisen. Mine own, in fact. Refined in purest dragon blood. Alas, the ages have taken their toll. Tis as withered as mine own flesh. Yet, mayhap, the Batali's profane magics would be capable of drawing forth its late potency. If that is what you seek, Arisen, then go on to their stronghold. I believe tis there you shall find the means to achieve it. This is all wrong. What use are pitiful fragments such as these? What we have achieved is sufficient to sway the pawns. But when the time comes to fell the dragon, I fear it may not be enough. Lord Phasus insists we shall succeed, and yet... Ah, a new hand, are you? Have you some business with me? Why? Tis an Arisen's. This... This is incredible. I've never seen such a luster. But why do you possess such a thing? Where did you obtain it? No. Never mind. Tis of no consequence. All that matters is this. With this alone, I shall be able to craft a superior godsway, the finest of all created to date. I must make haste that I might deliver it to Lord Phasus even a moment sooner. But wait, no. I have not the worm's life crystals to restore it. Concern it all! Ha <laughs> oh, ha! Don't be ridiculous! Do you even understand what you are offering? Worm's life crystals can only be obtained from Drake's. But. I suppose I am in no position to decline, even if tis a fool's errand. Lord Phasus is satisfied with the God's way as tis, you see. And as I can expect no support from him, you can expect little aid from me. Though I suppose twouldn't do to send you away entirely empty-handed. Feel free to take what you require from the laboratory. Now. As I've said, Worm's Life Crystals can only be obtained from Drake's and their ilk. Seek one out and fell it, if tis within your power. All the better if it happens to be a lesser dragon. You would be solving two of my problems, then. You've returned. Have you obtained any Worm's Life Crystals? You have. 
Incredible! That is no small feat. I must admit, I had not thought you much chance of success. Yet here you are. And this, this is precisely what I require to complete my work. I shan't delay. Come by again tomorrow. By then, I will have produced a god's way of unparalleled quality. Oh, it is finished. The result is even more sublime than I'd hoped. <laughs> I must deliver it to Lord Phasus at once. Though, mayhap. Now, I cannot leave this in your hands. I may not be fleet of foot, but only I can do this. changed my mind. You take it. Deliver the blade to Lord Faces. You ought reach him in time. Go now. Make haste for Moonglint Tower. There your journey will come to an end. One way or another. Retreat soon. I fear we are all lost. We all press on, my lord. Mine's not the stone puppets, then. We move. It arose from the sea. What could have summoned it? Seem the stone puppet has stopped. Have the wounded been tended to? Yes, my lord. Good. I trust you are prepared, Sovereign of Vermont. W will it really be all right? I I'm not about to be charred, am I? Fear not. You are in no danger. Dragon shall be under my control when it appears. Come, let us press onward.
dragon. Heed my call. Your will is mine to command. Curses. This arrival of the true risen is most inopportune. Sovereign of Vermin, the ritual must not be disturbed. Let not the Arisen approach. You can manage that, I trust. Your efforts are for naught, Arisen. Now, simply watch as this world's hollow and fruitless order is remade by my hand. Ritual is complete. The dragon comes. <laughs> Behold, the Royce Dragon. By my power, the dogma of dragons is unmade. Stand arisen. We must all be free from the vulgar order wherein the dragon's existence determines all. Hast thou summoned the resolution to face me? Then answer me this. Why dost thou fight? Is it to reclaim thy flesh, thy stolen heart? Or is it to reclaim thy throne? I offer thee a choice. Grant unto me this life in my claws, and be gone from this place. Or stand and fight. Pitiable arisen. The time for thou to make thy choice is come. Show me the path thou wouldst walk. Go, and thou shalt live to claim thy coveted throne. Thou wouldst flee. This is the path thou hast chosen, Arisen. Thy choice is made. Return to thy kingdom. The world thou desired awaiteth thee there. A hollow world, if a restful one. We 
must fulfill our charges. I, as the dragon, and thou as the arisen. Climb upon me. We shall depart for our true battlefield.
хватит семейрисом. You fulfilled your charge, and you're not satisfied. Seek you greater status, perhaps to rule the world in time. Desire, you need merely spy out the path. The choice is thine, Arisen. By thy will alone can the course of the winners of fate be altered. You would still resist your fate. Understand you the folly of such a decision. Even the beating of your reclaimed heart was born of the great will of this world. Yet you would abandon it. Everything in this world, all that you have come to know as reality, is the creation of the great will. Should that will be lost, no mortal being can survive. However, if regret yet assails your spirit, then perhaps you should reaffirm your choice. Witness with your own eyes, or through the eyes of another, The fate of this world. Turn back. Leave now, while you can. You have strayed, Arisa. And for what? Lest you forget. You have a world where you belong. There, you are to fell the great evil in your path and rule the people as their sovereign. For that is who you are. And it is my wish that you should live out that life of purpose. The time has come for you to return. Go. My children shall see you there in safety. Let us go home. Together. To a world under your rightful rule. To a world all your own. This is your will. Then behold, a world unmerciful, the left the benevolent hands of God.
you find it strange. But this is your world. The world to which you longed to return. Alas, if only you had chosen to become sovereign. At the end of your travails, you could have ruled over these lands in perpetual peace. Yet that world of limitless possibilities has entered. You stand now upon its remains. The vestiges of a world that could have been so much more. Innumerable wills have served to deliver this world from extinction time and time again. You alone have refused to carry out that great purpose. What you see before you is the consequence of your apathy. Behold. You yet live. I suspected as much, given that your pawn still remains. One might hypothesize that your pawn is sustained by your vital essence. Or perhaps something more. In any case, we ought to apprise one another of the situation. Is there aught you would know? Ah, yes. I trust it has not escaped your notice that the end of days is upon us. After you vanished, together with the Red Dragon, the seas rose to swallow the skies. Twas perhaps a month from that evil day when a new calamity befell us. A host of dragons descended from the skies and fell upon the land with fang and claw. Luz the Oracle called upon me ere you arrived. As she tells it, Melv and its environs have already fallen prey to the beasts. Tis surely only a matter of time before the rest of the kingdom follows suit. I found the poor creature collapsed by the wayside near Batal. Recognizing your pawn, I decided to take the ailing thing into my custody. I thought it possible that the Arisen's pawn might hold the key to making sense of all this madness. Alas, try what I might. Your pawn will not wake. Mayhap you will succeed where I could not. The pawn is, after all, yours to command. Indeed, then I shall take my turn. In your absence, I had hoped your pawn might yield me some information. But as you have returned, I would hear the truth from your lips. Tell me, Arisen, what became of you this past month? So following your plunge into the sea on the dragon's back, some mysterious presence reached out to you. Could that have been the world forged? Yet why would such a being linger in those fathomless depths? I can only speculate. And speculate I shall. This ought to prove a fruitful avenue of investigation. For that I thank you. Now, if you can find a way to end this interminable slumber, your pawn is, of course, free to rejoin you. No longer do I feel the probing gaze of the Watching One. Is this your doing, newest of the Arisen? I am he who brought the dragon low, and o'er its bones raised the proud kingdom of Vermin. Despite the magnitude of my feet, I was dissatisfied and sought ere greater heights. Till at last, I ruled the world entire. Thus, 
did I come to know of the Watching One. The being by whose many eyes and ears no one or thing in this world goes unobserved. As to the purpose with which they watch, I know not. Yet I did divine one thing. This world has lain neath the Watching One's unwavering gaze ere the dawn of its history. I despaired at this discovery, for, if all is but a stage, did that not render my hard-won glories, my throne astride the world, mere spectacles for the all-seeing eye to watch? I... A farce, and I, the fool, exulting in my wooden crown. Do you understand, newest of the arisen? This is why I sought to fell the Watching One. Alas, though I cut down all who seemed false, be they man or woman, human or beast, young or old. I did not succeed. Indeed, my efforts led only to my own ruin. I was dubbed the Mad Sovereign, and by the hand of a new arisen, consigned to this place forevermore. Yet, I can only assume that you have achieved what I could not. How else to explain the changes I sense in the world? Ah, what bitter gall that I cannot witness the outcome for myself. Falter not, newest of the Arisen. For your path is just, and fading spirit though I am, I may yet summon those who can be of aid to you. I see you have returned, Arisen One. The Mad Sovereign has called, and so we answer. If you would save the people of this world from ruin, lead them here, for this place may chance to escape the coming destruction. Great 
will, does the dragon create a cycle, allowing it to forestall the end of this world time and time again? Yes, Larissa. This world has been safeguarded by the dragon. You yourself were chosen to form a part of this cycle. The Arisen is selected by the Great Will to play the role of the Dragon's counterpart. That is how this works. The Dragon serves to continue the cycle, and the Arisen exists to oppose it. This is the true meaning of the Dragon's counterpart. to unfold. Yet, it seems I will not be there to watch it.
Stay.